I'd like to talk to you today about a technology that I think is set to transform our world. Because I think our tools are now moving at a far faster pace than our ability to accept them. Face recognition has been a staple of science fiction films for a number of years. You've probably seen Terminator, Minority Report, CSI, and others. And you get these images in your mind of this bounding box that surrounds people's faces. Or images of Big Brother and surveillance states come to mind. Well, for most people, these are the types of things that they think about when they look at computer vision and face recognition technology. But this technology is no longer science fiction. It's reality. It's not only inevitable, it's here. Jeff Jarvis in his book, Public Part, says that what we're experiencing now is an effort to negotiate new norms for our new reality. And that it's hardly the first time. The first pr public privacy discussion began in the 1890s with the invention of the portable Kodak camera. And this led to a moral outcry and panic about people's privacy, with the New York Times decrying these fiendish Kodakers that are lying in wait to take your picture. And President Teddy Roosevelt outlawed these in Washington parks for a time. And legislators were ready to acquire opt-in permission for someone that wanted to take your picture. I've been studying this from a technical aspect, but also the social impact of what a computer vision equipped world means and where we're going. And I've come to the conclusion that a lot of people view this technology like it's magic. Not that they literally think it's magic, but it might as well be. It's like a black box of algorithms. And people get their perception of this technology largely from the films that they, they see in Hollywood. And there's usually two words that come up when people talk to me about this technology. The first word is, is that it's cool. And the second word is that it's creepy. So what I want to do today is take away some of the mystique around this technology. So for years, progress in computer vision has been slow and incremental. But recently we've seen this increase in, in computational power along with a decreased cost in sensors. In our labs in New York City, we've been experimenting with feature point detection and uh, the ability to do emotional expression recognition and really pushing the boundaries of what is possible. And I now believe that we are entering a phase of, of this technology where it will be, or if, if not already, is mainstream. It's astounding to think that Microsoft has sold over 20 million Kinect devices. That's 20 million face recognition and voice recognition sensors that sit inside of people's living rooms. In Australia, you can use your face in lieu of a passport. It's called face on the fly. And you simply walk in, you get your face identified compared to a photo, and uh, you can walk into Australia passportless. Now, I'm sure there's a few people that are very concerned about the perils, the privacy implica implications of this type of technology. But there's also a great opportunity for promise, and for innovation, for a new era of a human-computer interaction. Some good things can emerge from this as well, such as finding missing children in crowded places, or interactive toys that can respond instantly to a child's emotion expression, or environments that respond to your presence, removing the need for you to pull out a smartphone and interact with an interface at all. You simply walk into a Starbucks, and you order a cup of coffee, and you leave having paid with your face. Now, I'm a technology optimist, and I get very excited about these, these kinds of ideas. But I'm sure that there's more than a few people that are very anxious or maybe uneasy with these types of visions of the future. But I believe that uh, we've been down these roads before. Whether it's the magic of electricity, the horseless carriage, or even the Kodak portable camera. Because our technology is a part of us, whether it's in our pockets or it's in our bodies. As a society, we have to collectively decide what are the limitations and boundaries that we want to have on these tools that we create so that we can maximize the benefits while also simultaneously redu reducing any risk for possible abuse. But this is part of a larger discussion. This is part of a larger trend, one that will usher in a new hybrid reality. 
It's the blending of the real and the virtual. And I'm sure you've heard this a lot through a lot of, your other, of the other speakers here. It's a similar theme. But our, this is the new human condition, as our tools now become part of our humanity. Face recognition is by far not the last issue we'll face. It's part of the inevitable integration of the tools that we create and, uh, and our humanity. Ray Kurzweil once told me, anything new and unfamiliar is creepy. Uh, I think that we probably should look beyond some of the Hollywood films that we see and start thinking about the past, where we've been, where we are today, and some of the lessons that we've already learned from the technologies that we've uh, already been through. And I think that's an important idea we're sharing. Thank you.